What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. WWE News and Rumors for the week ending November 17th, 2013. And you guys know what's coming up. I mean, do I even have to say it? Of course I do. I'm going to say it anyway because I enjoy saying it. Fuck those other guys. Fuck those other guys. This is your number one source for all your WWE needs. And happy PlayStation 4 Day, everybody. I just did an unboxing video on my channel. If you guys missed that, I'll link it down below in the description. But this is not about the PlayStation 4. This is not about video games. This is about WWE. I got a lot of news for you guys, and I'm going to get right into it this week. Got a lot of news. Cassius Ono was released from the WWE. I'll touch upon that in a little bit. But I'm going to start off with WWE and Triple H. His new direction. As I reported last week, how there's a new direction being led by Triple H within the WWE to push larger wrestlers. It appears that the company has changed its tune on signing former TNA and WWE star Matt Morgan. With WWE's renewed effort to sign bigger wrestlers and feature larger-than-life stars on TV, they have recently expressed interest in bringing Morgan back. It is said that Triple H specifically is interested. Now, this is a great move by WWE. I've been wanting Matt Morgan back in the WWE for a very long time. The blueprint, Matt Morgan. I was a fan of his on TNA. From what I've seen of him, now, I don't watch TNA, okay? I'm not a regular TNA watcher. But from what I've seen of Matt Morgan, I like what he can do in the ring. He's agile. He's got a great look to him. He can be a great heel if they give him the proper push on WWE TV. And this is the direction I like. You know, I don't want to see these fucking muscle-bound guys who can't fucking even, you know, perform a body slam. That it looks fucking sloppy. I want guys that can actually fucking look good. They can look big. They can have this fucking larger-than-life appeal to them. But they gotta fucking wrestle. They gotta do what they need to do in the ring. Matt Morgan is one of those guys. I'm happy to see that this was on this week's news. And I'm, I, I hope. I hope Triple H actually goes ahead and brings Matt Morgan in. And that would be a great pickup for the WWE. It really would. Now, Cassius Ono. A lot of people have been asking me on Twitter. A lot of people have been asking me in last week's comment section. JD, what do you think of Chris Hero? Cassius Ono being released from the WWE. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a fucking grave mistake. It is a mistake. Okay? Cassius Ono's release from the WWE on Friday was not a big shocker to most within the company. Cassius Ono's troubles with the WWE started and have been reported this past summer. Going back to the summer, Ono was very frustrated with his spot in the WWE about not getting called up to the main roster. Ono was said to be on the short list to actually get called up on more than one occasion. But every time he was tested with his attitude and commitment, he failed. Weight training has never been Ono's strong suit, but his frustration was believed to be part of the reason why he wasn't receptive, receptive to increasing his workouts and getting his body where the WWE officials wanted it to be. No word yet on what actually led to Ono's departure, but Triple H was at the WWE Performance Center recently dealing with some issues. Triple H was never a supporter of Cassius Ono, and it was always Vince McMahon that wanted to call him up to TV. That's all you need to do to get released, folks. That's all you need to do to get released. If you guys have been watching the product as long as I have, and if you know the ins and outs of uh, the shit that you hear on the internet and the fucking image you get from the shit that's reported on the internet, Triple H, if you're in hot water, if you're in the doghouse with Triple H, if Triple H just does not like you, you might as well just kiss your WWE career goodbye. Now, this is a fucking absolutely stupid thing for the WWE to do. I, I, I mean, I don't care who he is. I don't care what he looks like. I don't care if he's got a fucking attitude. There's got to be somebody on the roster that can work with this guy to get him where he needs to be. This seems, this seems to me that the WWE said, you know what, fuck it. We got a lot of other guys and we don't need this guy. This is a mistake. You don't let prime talent just go. 
You don't let prime talent just walk. You don't let prime talent out of their contract like this. This is just not a fucking bum in the street that just joined the WWE Performance Center. This is not a bum in the street that was just a noob in the WWE NXT division. It's not. This is fucking Chris Hero. Cassius Ono, okay? I, you know, when he first came in, I was happy. You know, they're signing actual fucking talent. Then they gave him this stupid name, Cassius Ono. Then I started watching some of the NXT programs that featured Cassius Ono, and I'm like, you know what? This guy is going to work. This guy has a great look. This guy has a great ring presence and attitude on camera. I can get past the fucking silly name, you know? He had a nice little catchphrase, too. But I don't understand if the WWE, you know, is this quick to get rid of prime talent like this. This doesn't, you know, it, nothing's going to get past me here. This is, this, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not shocked by this. I'm really not. I, I'm more on the upset side that they let talent go because if you guys see the talent they have in NXT, it is a plethora of talent. And... He was one of the guys that I was actually looking forward to, to being the next guy. You know, the next guy after Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and now you got Bray Wyatt. Cassius Ono was that next guy I wanted to be called up. It's him and the Ascension. I want that tag team down at NXT, the Ascension, to be called up and give some more depth to the WWE tag team division. But this is a big mistake. This guy had all the talent in the world to be a major WWE player in the future. And they let him go. Now he's taken independent bookings. He's been on record to say this and that about WWE. And now it's over. You're never going to see Chris Hero back in the WWE again. You know, where, where's he going to go? He's not going to TNA. He may go back to Ring of Honor. You know, now he's doing the independent thing. You know, he's not doing Ring of Honor yet, but... I have a feeling he's going to make his way back over there. Listen, if TNA was smart, if TNA was bright, you know, I would actually scoop him up like that. Scoop him up. But this is a failure by Triple H. This is one of the, one of the few big, big, big mistakes that I've seen Triple H make. You know, this other thing is uh, with this larger-than-life uh, aura that he wants these wrestlers to have now. That's another fucking mistake. You don't need larger-than-life athletes. You got to get guys like fucking Daniel Bryan and, and Dolph Ziggler and Curtis Axel and CM Punk. Damien Sandow in the ring. I, th those are what I see as wrestlers. I don't want to see these fucking muscle-bound guys, man. Cassius Ono, released from the WWE. Let me know what you guys think. Monday's taped episode of WWE Raw scored a 2.73 cable TV rating, down from the previous week of 2.75. Monday Night Raw this week averaged 3.768 million viewers, which is the fewest viewers the show has had since the October 7th episode. Well... Monday Night Raw was taped, and the taped episodes always do worse than everything else. And the fact that the show was absolutely fucking boring is, uh, is another reason. You know, there was nothing good on Monday Night Raw except for the Wyatt Family and the Shield. That's it. And the whole Daniel Bryan CM Punk altercation. That was it. There was nothing on Monday Night Raw that stood out that made me say, you know what, this is a decent show. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. And the WWE has a tendency to go overseas and get lazy. And we have one Monday Night Raw left before the Survivor Series. Are you even inclined to actually buy the Survivor Series? I guarantee you, 10 out of 10 of you would say no. I'm one of them. WWE has confirmed a new match for the Survivor Series. Now, a lot of people have been telling me, JD, it's rumored there's going to be a 6-on-6 six six tag team match. And I went against that. I'm like, this is not the traditional Survivor Series match that I'm inclined to watching. This is not something I would have an interest in. I don't care... What parties are involved? But the WWE now has confirmed Daniel Bryan will team with CM Punk against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan of the Wyatt family. Now, where does that leave Bray Wyatt? I'm sure he's going to get involved somehow. Uh, maybe he's still recovering from that injury that happened uh, a month ago. I don't know. But one of the reasons they want to highlight Luke Harper and Eric Rowan is because they want them in the spotlight just as much as Bray Wyatt. Now... This is going to be one of the matches I'm going to be paying attention to. It will probably end up being the best match of the night. And I'm glad this is a two-on-two -two match. You, you can figure everything else out, but knowing the WWE, you know, the rest of the Survivor Series card is just going to look absolutely dreadful. 
And I really don't even give a, I don't really don't even care about this pay per view. I really don't. This is the only match on this pay per view that I actually have interest in seeing. John Cena versus De, uh, Del Rio, I don't care. Randy Orton versus fucking Big Slow, I don't care either. They they're not giving you shit that you want to say. You know what? I'm gonna spend fifty dollars on that, and I'm gonna talk about that more during the Survivor Series review when it actually comes. You know, so I'll save my frustration and my rants for I know uh, what's gonna be a fucking shitty pay per view. I'll save it for the review. Uh, what else we got here? WWE Survivor Series was trending worldwide at the end of uh, Monday Night Raw this past week with the big six-on-six confrontation with The Shield and The Wire family versus CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Cody Rhodes, Goldust, and The Usos. Uh, while it's not announced by WWE yet, there was speculation that these two teams will face off in an elimination match at the Survivor Series pay-per-view uh, in, uh, in about a week and a half. Uh, now, obviously, that's not going to come to be because WWE just announced this week that, uh, like I just said, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan will... Uh, go against CM Punk and Daniel Bryan in a 2v2 match. So, um, I don't know what the WWE is going to do with the rest of the card, but there you got it. Just a few weeks after booking him to an unsuccessful cash-in on his Money in the Bank briefcase against World Heavyweight Champion John Cena, WWE officials are looking at Damian Sandow to be more of a top guy now. This is very interesting. I'm very glad that I read this article this week. Now, the reason why he got a win over Kofi Kingston on Monday Night Raw is because they're trying to position him, like I just said, as a top guy. A very decisive win over Kofi Kingston. I'm, I'm glad that Damian Sandow is, you know, has got the WWE creative team and Triple H and Vince McMahon behind him. He definitely fits that sinister heel. He's got a great character. He's got a great look. He's got great ring presence. He's, got, he's great on the mic. I love his theme music. And uh, this is very good news for Damian Sandow. Everybody's saying, oh, you know, his career's finished. I don't know where they're going to go with him from here after dropping a briefcase to John Cena. He's just going to be fed to John Cena. He's never going to recover. Hopefully, Damian Sandow, you know, maintains that top spot and eventually becomes a top heel in the business and has that World Heavyweight strap to go along with that. So, we're hoping for that. And I'm glad Damian Sandow's got the, the backing of WWE Creative now. The latest word on Rob Van Dam is that he will be back for the WWE before the Royal Rumble pay-per-view in January. RVD is expected to work from the Rumble through WrestleMania 30 and likely take a month or two off after that. Probably He'll probably do the Royal Rumble through WrestleMania, like the report says, take a few months off and then come back for SummerSlam like he, you know, like he did. It's uh, you know, a typical RVD. Um, you, know, you don't really need him on the roster all that often. Uh, he really, you know, he, he enhances the roster, but... It's not going to really, you know, make that big of an impact. You know, he's one of those commodities. He's one of those special attraction guys. I love seeing him on WWE TV. He looked great in his, in his uh, latest run for WWE. But uh, he will be back uh, during the Royal Rumble, like I originally stated a few months back um, after he left, for, uh, you know, his last match with Del Rio. And RVD also is currently working on his autobiography, which is, being, which is not being published uh, through the WWE, if you guys are interested in uh, reading up on RVD. There was at least talk this past week of bringing SummerSlam. Now, this is interesting for you guys, uh, for my UK listeners. There was at least talk of bringing SummerSlam to London. No word yet on how serious the talks are, but this was mentioned on the current European tour to some people with major business connections in Europe as something being considered. I always said that the crowd in Europe, wherever they go in Europe, is always great. A lot of energy. They're into the product. They're never boring. They were the, one of the main reasons why Monday Night Raw uh, was actually watchable because the crowd on Monday Night Raw was great. Um, they were very excited for most of the stuff that happened with the top programs. And I would like to see SummerSlam, a major pay-per-view, overseas. I think it would do good for the product. It would do good for the pay-per-view. You know, a lot of these fucking U U.S. cities, depending on where you go, there's only a select few that are really fucking fantastic. But a lot of places in the United States, the people are just boring. They go to a show and they sit on their fucking hands. They don't do nothing. They're not into the product. They just go because they got to drag their fucking brat child around. And it's not really exciting. There's no fucking energy in the crowd. There's no energy in the arena. There's no, this doesn't have a good atmosphere. I think it would do the WWE good if they actually held a pay-per-view overseas. That's just my honest opinion. It really is. I mean, if it's anything like Monday Night Raw, you know, you know when they go overseas, I think it would be very good for the product. So I hopefully that, you know, the talks in that consider are being considered. I hope that moves forward in some way. And hopefully we'll be seeing SummerSlam in London or wherever in Europe, you know, sometime soon. Now, now, Hulk Hogan. 
Hulk Hogan's name has been in and out of the fucking news all week. Okay? As you know, Hulk Hogan is currently a free agent uh, following the expiration uh, of his contract with TNA Wrestling last month. Now, he is interested in returning to the WWE for WrestleMania 30. He, we all know that. It's no fucking secret. He wants to be at WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans. Okay? He even said, and I quote, I would love to be at WrestleMania 30. I would love to have a ringside seat. But the truth is, I need a job. I quit TNA. I've just been hanging out at the beach. Hogan told Philadelphia's ABC affiliate at an autograph signing last week. Never say never. In response to whether he can still wrestle, Hogan said, and I quote, right guy, right venue, and right payday. The legendary grappler also noted that he may hulk up. I don't think I can wrestle too much anymore, he said, but just being around the business and helping and being a part of it is still pretty cool to me, Hogan said. PWInsider.com reported last month that the 60-year-old has been training like a madman in hopes of wrestling again for the WWE. Hogan returning to the promotion could hinge on Triple H, who was leaving the door open for his return to the sports entertainment organization. The six-time WWE champion told the Associated Press in October that he was warmly received by Vince McMahon's son-in-law at a recent charity function. Now, if you guys paid attention to me, everything regarding the rumors of a WrestleMania 30 card, nothing really signifies or signals to a steady opponent for John Cena. Nothing. You know, you hear about The Undertaker, you hear about Lesnar, you hear about The Rock, you hear about Daniel Bryan, you hear about this one, you hear about that one. John Cena's name is sometimes left out of the picture. Now, it's no secret that Hulk Hogan wants to fight John Cena in his last match, I hope, his last match at the biggest stage in all of wrestling at WrestleMania 30. Now, it would be fantastic. It would be great to see Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 30. Do I think... He can sell WrestleMania 30 against John Cena? Absolutely no fucking question. Do I want to see him back in the ring again against John Cena? I'm going to say yes. Do I want to see him back in the WWE? I'm going to say yes again. Now, 60 years old. A lot of people are saying that Hogan can't give you anything as far as a match goes at 60 years old. Well, Sting is 54 years old and he still looks great. The Undertaker is 48 years old wrestles once a year, and puts on the match of the year almost every year, okay? John Cena and The Rock was awful. It was absolutely fucking awful. The first one was was decent, okay? I'm not going to bash the first one because it was the first time we've seen it. The second time around, I couldn't give a flying fuck about what happened in that match because I knew what the outcome was going to be, and the match was just fucking terrible. What happened in the ring was awful. Now, I honestly do think that John Cena and Hulk Hogan would be like The Rock versus Hogan when it happened. I, I really think that. I, I want to see how it happens, and I want to see how it would materialize on WWE TV. It would be a very exciting time for the WWE. You got the biggest name in all of professional wrestling, in the history of wrestling, coming back to challenge the face of the company right now. Obviously, it would be a passing of the torch, I guess. You know, it, it, it really wouldn't be a passing of the torch because Hogan passed it to The Rock. The Rock passed it to Cena. You know, now you're going to go backwards again. You're going to have Hogan pass it to Cena. Cena already has the torch. This would, this would just be simply an attraction match for WrestleMania. Now, I don't know how well it's going to be received by a lot of people. Let me know what you guys think down below. But, like I just said, a lot of people are having issues with Hogan coming back because, like I said, The Rock passed the torch to Hogan. Uh, the Ro Hogan passed the torch to The Rock, rather. And then The Rock passed it to... John Cena. And before that, Steve Austin had it. He passed it to The Rock. So, Cena has the torch right now. He's the number one guy. You know, I don't, I don't, see, I don't see why the WWE would, gone, would, would, would want to go backwards here. You know, after what The Rock did for Cena, he passed the torch. New WWE champion at the time last year at WrestleMania. Now, all of a sudden, Hogan comes in. And a lot of people tend to think that Hogan is selfish. Hogan is only out for himself. Hogan just wants the fucking spotlight for himself. He don't give a fuck about anybody else. And yes, all that is true. But as a wrestling fan, you're going to eat this up, regardless. It's going to sell WrestleMania. Hogan at WrestleMania is going to sell itself. Having him against John Cena in a match is going to be a fucking, one of the biggest paydays ever for WWE. Mix that in with whoever else you got on the card. You got 
Punk versus Brian, hopefully. You got Lesnar versus The Undertaker. You got, you know, I don't know, Vince McMahon coming back, feuding with Triple H. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen there? Listen, this, this WrestleMania can shape up to be one of the best of all time, if done right. I'm all for Hogan coming back and fighting John Cena at WrestleMania. It's all going to come down to how they introduce him back to the WWE audience. That's what's going that's what's going to be the most interesting part of this. You know, I honestly do believe that the storyline leading up to WrestleMania if it does happen would be a lot better done and a lot more focused compared to The Rock. I think The Rock would, you know, what he did with John Cena last year and the second time they met, awful. Absolutely awful. But that's just my opinion on that. Uh, also, we got two more uh, two more pieces of news here. In response to the online reports that the Carter family is looking to sell TNA wrestling, Janice Carter, mother of President Dixie Carter, issued a memo to employees on November 1st squashing the rumors of sale talks and that her family was fully committed to the organization. However, according to figure4wrestlingonline.com, she is lying as multiple sources within the organization have stated that negotiations are currently still being held for potential buyers. Furthermore, nearly everyone who has been speculated online, including mus- musician and resistance pro wrestling owner Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins, is not involved in the, in the negotiations. It is said that some WWE officials are following the story very closely with one source saying, more so than people would ever imagine. It's not because WWE is interested in purchasing TNA, but because they are curious to know who desires what and what the status will be of some of the talents, specifically Hulk Hogan and Sting. Now, if there was one guy who I know would buy TNA in a heartbeat, like I said last week, it would be Vince McMahon, not because of who he values on the roster, because of what he values in their library. That's all he wants. That's all he did with WCW. He would do the same thing with TNA. But I'm, I'm, I'm following the story very closely. I'm, I'm very interested to see who actually is going to purchase TNA. And I knew, I knew Janice Carter was lying with the memo. Listen, you know, she only said that just to keep everybody at ease. And they don't want people to worry. They don't want the workers to be uncomfortable and worry about the, the company going under. Listen, she did that to keep everybody calm. From what I read, multiple fucking websites and credible websites as well. TNA is for sale. We just don't know who is interested and when it's going to happen. And finally, guys, if you guys are wondering where Wade Barrett is, hasn't been on WWE TV in a few months. It was reported last month by several sources Wade Barrett was having issues with his visa, preventing him from being able to make a full-time return to the WWE. Those troubles seem to be continuing, and there is no timetable set for his return once the company officials return to the States. Barrett noted on Twitter that his appearance in Newcastle uh, this past week marked the end of his UK run, but he's still traveling for other overseas events this week. Tonight, they'll be in Zurich, Switzerland, and Wade Barrett mentioned he will be there. It's been several months since Wade Barrett has been seen on WWE TV. He needs to come back. He needs to come back strong. He needs to come back with a new gimmick. He needs to come back being very focused. He has the potential to be one of the best heels in the company if the WWE gives him a proper push, gives him some momentum, gives him the right guy to work with. When he was with NXT in that whole NXT invasion, Wade Barrett was fucking awesome, and he was a rookie. As he developed onto the roster and as the years went on, he lost so much stock because WWE creative doesn't know what the fuck to do with him. He's got monster heel written all over him. If the WWE wants to get behind him, they need to repackage him completely, put their foot down, and push the guy. You know, he can do wonders if he's got the right people to work with, if he's got creative behind him. I want to see Wade Barrett succeed. I'm sure you guys want to see Wade Barrett succeed. It would be good for the company. It would be good for Wade Barrett. And I want to get him, I want to get him back to the, to the amount of heat he was drawing when he was with NXT, leading the NXT invasion. He was fucking hated going against John Cena. That was great for Wade Barrett. I figured he was going to be a superstar right out of the gate from then. Then all of a sudden he got fed to John Cena. And his career went right down the fucking toilet, never to recover. So we'll see what happens with Wade Barrett. Hopefully he comes back strong. Hopefully he comes back focused. And hopefully he comes back with a new gimmick. And the WWE creative team gives him something good to work with. That is the WWE news this week, guys. If you enjoyed, you obviously know what to do. Like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. I am out, guys. I will see you on Tuesday with my next WWE video, Monday Night Raw review. Uh, I think Monday Night Raw is live this week, so hopefully it's a lot better show than what we've seen this past week. It was fucking terrible. And if you guys enjoy more WWE content from me, I got 30 years of WrestleMania 
going on my channel right now from WW2K14. Right now I'm in the Ruthless Aggression era. Uh, I just posted Brock Lesnar versus Bill Goldberg. I got Big Show versus John Cena. I got all the classic matches on my channel now. Go to their individual set lists or playlists on my channel. You'll find all those videos there uploaded for your enjoyment. Check them out. Let me know what you think. Like I said, guys, I'll see you on Tuesday. I'm out. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.